Are you serious? Are you serious? <clears throat> now we're talking war, potentially World War III. President Trump has condemned the brutal regime of Kim Jong-un after Otto Warmbier has died. Matter of fact, Otto Warmbier, the American college student who recently turned, who was returned to the United States after being imprisoned in North Korea for over a year, for what, taking a poster down off the wall just before he was leaving to get on the plane to go back home to college in Cincinnati, Ohio. He ended up being put on trial, sentenced to 15 years hard labor, in which he then ended up in a coma, sent home and died in days. Um, he was recently returned home uh, after being imprisoned in North Korea. He has died prompting outrage and condemnation from President Donald Trump and other world leaders. But uh, folks, Trump isn't playing. The look in his eye was not good. Matter of fact, President Donald Trump has condemned the brutality of North Korea's regime. North Korea has branded the U.S. lawless gangsters after an alleged breach of diplomatic protocol at the J JFK airport in New York, and seven American soldiers have died out in the Pacific Ocean uh, after their warship, the USS Fitzgerald, somehow collides with a Philippine flag cargo ship near the Tokyo Bay. So Secretary of State Rex Tillerson has said the U.S. is considering a ban on all Americans traveling to North Korea. And North Korean soldier has just defected from Kim Jong-un's regime by swimming across the Han River into South Korea. This is all taking place right now. Uh, we're also getting news that the South Korean president, Moon Jae-in, has said in a CBS News interview that he wishes to sit down at the negotiating table with North Korea. The president underlined that he wants to discuss the regime's development of nuclear weapons and avoid questions on the possibility of a preemptive strike on the hermit state of North Korea. He said, quote, when it comes to preemptive strikes, this is something we may be able to discuss at a later date when the threat has become even more urgent. So, folks, the saber rattling, the name calling, the threats, I mean, uh, it's, it's ratcheting up. Dennis Rodman just come back from his visit to, Kim, to see Kim Jong-un. And Kim Jong-doom said this could be a time of a boom. And uh, nuclear uh, ambitions of the young uh, little dictator continues to uh, cause a ripple effect across the East. Matter of fact, if you look at the biblical prophecies of the book of Revelation, in the 16th chapter of Revelation, you realize that the kings of the East do play a major role in the end time setting up of the Battle of Armageddon. People don't realize this, but let me read to you. If you read the 16th chapter of the book of Revelation, it talks about a lot of things, water turning blood red, all kinds, you know, the, the, the uh, all kinds of different, uh, the sun getting so hot that starts scorching people, uh, cancer increases, all kinds of things happen, uh, and, uh, and men will blaspheme God. They won't repent of their sins. They blaspheme. They'll gnaw their tongues for pain. But in verse 12, it says, the sixth angel poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the false prophet. And they are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God almighty. These, it, it, it's preparing the kings of the east. And then these kings are manipulated 
as well as other kings around the globe by these three unclean spirits that are like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. Now, this year is the year 5777, Hebrew calendar. We know it's also the year of the 50th anniversary, the 50th, the Jubilee year of Jerusalem's reunification. It's also the year that we're going to see the great American solar eclipse that goes from Oregon to South Carolina. And 33 days later, it is the year that's going to be the great wonder in heaven seen and spoken about right here in Revelation chapter 12. We know about the woman clothed with the sun, with the moon under her feet and the stars in her crown, giving birth to the man child. But did you know there's also another sign? And, and let's read that because that's what we're talking about here. Besides this first great wonder in heaven, in verse three, John says this, and there appeared another wonder in heaven and behold, a great red dragon having seven heads and 10 horns and seven crowns upon his heads. And he drew, his tail drew a third part of the stars of heaven and did cast them to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, which was ready to deliver for to be to for to devour her child as soon as it was born. What child? The man child. Look what it says. And she brought forth a man child uh, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And her child was caught up into God and to his throne. Then it talks about the woman fleeing into the wilderness where there was a safe place prepared by God. A lot of folks see that as Israel fleeing into the wilderness, uh, into Petra, where there is a place prepared for the Jews fleeing Judea and Samaria, which are actually the West Bank. We've started now. The peace process has begun. Uh, uh, Jason Greenblatt from the Trump administration arrived in Jerusalem yesterday to start the process. And Jared Kirshner will arrive tomorrow. And negotiations will begin in Jerusalem and then in Ramallah in, in the West Bank with the Palestinian Authority. And the process has begun. So we're having a, a great sign in the heavens, September 23rd. First, you've got the uh, great American solar eclipse, August 21st. 33 days later, you have the great wonder in heaven and another wonder in heaven. The dragon also trying to get involved. The beast is trying to rise. You say, well, how do you know this is the beast, Pastor Begley? Well, it said it had seven heads and ten horns. Go to the very next chapter, Revelation 13. And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. And upon the horns were ten crowns, and upon his heads the name blasphemy. So, the new world order, the Illuminati, the beast in the biblical narrative of the word of God prophetically is getting in position. All of these things are happening and it will be an assault upon the body of Christ and upon freedom. Anything to do with freedom, anyone that tries to protect Israel that has to flee into the wilderness will also be targeted. And that would mean the United States of America and others. Don't you dare go anywhere. We're living in the last days. Stay with this YouTube channel. We'll keep you up to the minute with everything going on around the world and how it relates to biblical prophecy. You can see the signs of the coming of the Lord. Are you ready to meet him? Yeshua is the Messiah, the son of the living God. Shalom, shalom, I pray for peace. But I can tell you that when Jesus Christ returns, he's going to gather his elect, his bride. Will you be ready to go? Are you saved? Call upon the name of Jesus Christ and be saved. Don't miss today's live broadcast, 12 noon Eastern, at my website at www.paulbegleyprophecy.com. That's www.paulbegleyprophecy.com.